Hello, my name is Susan, and this video is about a recent find that is of interest to a person such as myself. And at about the age of five, I began sewing with a needle and thread and knitting, which were both um, skills that were taught from the home. And as a teen, venturing into the city of Portland, I worked with a local seamstress who kind of catered to the local rockers and people passing through the city. And I also would visit the used clothing stores. And the items that caught my interest the most were the items that were made, things that were older. And I would start to seek out throughout the state of Maine, I would look, I would start searching for the Victorian clothing and, and the older, older things. And I was interested because I noticed that a lot of those items were hand-stitched and the, the fabric was a little different than modern fabric. And, um, you know, simply the, the items of that time period, the industrialization that occurred in late 1800, early 1900, uh, isn't the same as it is today. Typically, unless you find an individual who specializes in such things. And recently, a person whom I happened to be acquainted with, who happened to know that I had an interest in such things, handed to me essentially six or seven pounds of items that had been produced by his ancestry. And included in those items is a truly Victorian christening gown. A christening gown is a garment that was worn by an infant when the infant was being baptized. And Victorian is the time period, late 1800, early 1900. So around the, the turn of, of that century. And uh, so this video is, uh, I intend to simply present that christening gown as I've been documenting and photographing the items that had been presented to me. So hopefully you also find this uh, of interest. This is the christening gown. When I first saw the gown, a very quick assessment, thinking it's from about 1900, considering the fabric itself and the details. The gown was stored with this card, which happens to be the name of the family associated with it. I will mention at this time that if one happens to find such an item, Handling them is very, very delicate. Sometimes handling tissue paper is easier than handling such items. It's very important to wash one's hands first because the oils of the hands can actually stain and damage such cloth. And if possible, wear gloves. And this is if one has concern of preserving such items. The gown is approximately 42 inches in length. I was a little concerned about my assessment of the gown being of 1900 when I closely examined the trim to the far, to the very bottom of the gown, where the trim looks more as though it's produced by a machine as opposed to hand embroidered. Just the consistency of the stitching it's just like extremely consistent. It doesn't have that inconsistency that some uh, hand embroidered has. Though hand embroidery does get very meticulous and some examples of it are just phenomenally perfect. Machine-like. However, when I look at the other details, those that are hand-stitched, that signifies to me that it's very much a truly Victorian item. There were machines available in that time period, so having a machine-produced trim is not impossible. <laughs> okay. 
Examining the interior of the gown, some of the stitching is more notable. And when looking at the stitching from the interior, it starts to look much more similar to the hand stitched. Though these stitches still have kind of the consistency of a machine, though there were some machines that have that kind of plucked, they, they leave it kind of like a plucked aesthetic with each stitch, as this one has. And uh, some of those machines were operated, kind of like a hand crank operated, they weren't electric at all. However, towards the top of the dress, that's where one begins to see some very interesting hand stitch detailing, such as the gathers in the pleats. If one looks closely, one can see the thread, the individual thread stitching through all of the gathers. Very beautiful detail. That was hand done, as was this embroidery work. See, that's very, very consistent stitch work. The ladies then did not have television sets. They sat and stitched. And one can see the consistency, it's not like a machine stitch. And some of the work machines aren't capable of doing. There's also this detailing over the chest. Very ornate. There are a few thin spots in it, so it's very, it's extremely delicate. It's like, tissue paper is thicker than some spots on that. It's like, saying paper thin is, it would be an overstatement. It's not even paper thin. Very fragile. Then these details on the arms as well. Now, this is the back of the gown, the back of the top of the gown. And I'm not going to open it up because it is so fragile. I want to avoid damaging it. Though one can see some of the details in the back that are going to show some of how the dress, how the gown itself is constructed. Again, there are the pleats. Might note some of this, the, the stitch going through the, through the, the gather. And it's interesting that embroidery we saw on the front, that embroidered band, has a solid backing to it on the interior of the gown. And then that detailing around the chest if one looks closely, those look like hand stitches towards the, towards the lower part of the view. One can kind of see it looks like hand stitches where the embroidery joins with the solid fabric. And I'm not entirely certain about those detailings in terms of whether machine production or hand production. I would like to say hand production, though the consistency almost is machine-like. Though this neckline, there's a lot of hand stitching going along this neckline. And within that neckline, there's a string, a draw cord. Definitely hand stitched there.
and back to the shoulder detail again. Some really interesting embroidery work. So that's the christening gown. And yeah, it's very nitpicky and fussy. But it's kind of interesting. Especially considering this is a piece of fabric that somehow has uh, been in existence for longer than a lot of people's lifetimes. It's uh, approaching about 120 years. It pr it produced about 120 years ago. And for a fabric item produced that long ago, it's in excellent condition.